Hello, Mr. Manik, helping my students understand how to use parallel lists in Python. Here, uh, as of spring 2018, I have a demo program hosted at trinket.io. It's named Organizer Project Demo 2. And when you execute the program, let's watch. Uh, the user is this, um, prompted with a nice menu. When the user pre presses the one key and hits the enter key after that, a submenu appears allowing the user to, to again type a one and hit the enter key to see a list of names. If the user types the initial one for the menu and then a second menu input of a two, whoops, then the user will see a list of usernames. At our school district, uh, if your name is, say, Chris in the real world, your username might happen to be 202999, a six digit number. But notice we are treating the names, but I'm sorry, we're treating the usernames as string values in this list. Uh, I purposely put double quotes around all of the entries in the list, as well as, of course, the names up here in the names list. And we'll soon see a list of passwords that match up. Now notice how I spaced out the list, uh, adding an unnatural set of uh, blank spaces so that the entry here lines up nicely with Dan. And Dan chose the password, password123. So that's why all three of these vertically align here in my source code. I didn't have to do that, but it helps me logically understand that student names stored in a list named names and the usernames stored in a list named usernames, as well as the passwords stored in a list named passwords at the top of this program. They are all parallel with each other, meaning they match up in corresponding uh, values. Notice that the length of this list is six, and the length of this list, of course, matches it with six, and of course, passwords. Okay, so uh, all of those lists are saved up here in the global variable area of my Python script. I also have a bunch of functions nicely stored in my functions area. Of course, in Trinket, I could uh, retract and uh, fold those functions in like that, only revealing them when I need to see the uh, details. And then, of course, my main program, the way I like to teach and uh, students to learn Python coding, is down here at the bottom of my Python program. Okay, uh, if I were to, to run the program and type the menu option two, I can see the names, but they are sorted in order from A to Z, alphabetically. And notice all my names are lowercase. I don't wanna get right now, talk about uh, uppercase and lowercase distinctions, but notice in the original list, the way it's stored in the source code, Chris is in position zero, Dan is in position one, Edgar is in position two, and so on. But when I print the list in sorted order with menu option two, they come out from A to Z. Well, Fran is the, the letter F at the end there. Okay, uh, if I press the letter, the number three, when I run the program here, I uh, can check to see if a username is currently available. So let's see if 202999 is available or not. 202999, I press the enter key, and there's no feedback. Well, why is there no feedback? Oh, because I don't want to give away all the answers. Down here in my current version of this demo program, menu option three, 
which would be which is found uh, right in here. It, there's something for my students in this class to do. I have a little to do marker in there, and they have to put code in here to get a good assignment grade. But since they've already learned that in a previous demo program or lesson in class, I think my students can add the necessary code here so that menu option three does work and gives feedback whether that username is currently in the list of usernames or not. Moving on to menu option four here to retrieve a password. If the four is pressed and the enter key, then the user is prompted to input a username. So I'm going to check the username 100345. The matching password should be password123. Let's check to see if it works. 100345. I press the enter key and it says here, yes, the matching password for, for that username is indeed password123. If I were to run the program again and check but a username uh, that I want to check up its corresponding password with. But let's say I miss uh, type one of the usernames. So instead of 299999, I accidentally put an 8 there at the end. That username you can see is not in the system. So when I press the enter key over here, it says nothing. There's no feedback. How about that? That would be something to do here in this program so that when menu option four is used, if, oh, it should have said that it was not found, that the username was not found. Um, I'm not sure why that didn't work, but I'm hoping that students can fix that uh, part aspect of the program. Um, it should have said that the username that I typed in was not found. I'm going to test it one more time. Type in a four and check a bogus username like one, two, three, four, five, six, which I know is not in the system. Oh, there it worked. I don't know why it didn't work before, but anyway, uh, one, two, three was not found. So now moving on to uh, menu option five to see what menu option five does in this uh, program. Well, when I type five, I'm prompted to type in, manually type in the username whose password I would like to change. So let's say I would like to change I love mom to I love dad. So let's say that this username here, which is parallel to I love mom, was inputted and I just uh, kind of uh, did a copy and paste and that didn't quite work. So let me type it in manually here. Uh, 298 765. I hit the enter key. You can see there that I typed in a, that valid username. And it's now asking me to type in a new password. So whatever I type here, such as say, I love dad, all lowercase, should replace the matching parallel entry here in this list that matches up with 298765, the username. I press the Enter key. Now, it doesn't say that it successfully did that uh, replacement. That would be a nice upgrade. But now if I retrieve the password for that account, so let's do menu option four to check to see if that changed. Now, if I type in that same username, 298, 765. The matching password is indeed I love dad when I love dad was not the original. Now the uh, behind the scenes, this entry here, this entry 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, this, the, uh, the position number 4 of passwords has been permanently changed even though in the code it's still originally set to I love mom. Okay, uh, checking menu option six. Uh, let's see if that works in this present demo program. Uh, let's say that we want to remove Fran. And I have to type her username, not her real name. There could be two Frans as far as birth certificate names go. But there should, in a good network system, only be one username per person. 
So I'm going to type in the, the account uh, username 345678, pressing the enter key. It doesn't again give me confirmation that it was successful, but I'm hoping that it was. So I'm going to uh, display a, the list of usernames with menu option one. And I have to type in two from the submenu option to see those usernames. And it should no longer have Fran's information there. Good, it doesn't. The length is five, and that username is not there. But let's also check the list of names to see if the parallel corresponding name is also removed. Because that should have also been updated so that these parallel lists are still accurate and match with each other. I'm going to type a one. And yes, Fran is gone. She is no longer there in that list names. OK, uh, let's check to see if uh, typing a capital E works to exit the program. So I type a capital E there, hit the Enter key. It doesn't work. I try a lowercase e. It doesn't work. And now I notice, upon inspection of this code, way down here in menu option seven, that I don't have an or typed in here, checking to see if menu choice is equal to a seven or an uppercase E, or for that matter, lowercase E, or something with like leading space, like a space seven was entered. So you still have a lot of work to do to make this program more user friendly. Uh, notice that I think in the top of the if, else if, else if, I am using the upper method and the strip method to make it user friendly as far as this uppercase D goes for menu option one. You have a lot more work to do. And now let's take a quick walkthrough of the code to see uh, the rest of the uh, uh, code that's uh, typed out here in the main program area. Okay, I have a, a variable that's uh, storing the current menu choice inputted by the user. But notice this whole program is pretty much, the whole main program is pretty much one big while loop. And within that folded while loop, with my perfect indentation there, because Python is very strict about indentation, here's a call statement that calls the function display menu which, like a previous demo program, is typed up here in my functions section. There's display menu. There is its uh, body. You might have to edit this to add more menu options. Always keep exit at the bottom. Back to uh, the main area. After that call statement, I allow the user to input a menu choice. Now, when somebody uses the input command, that input is treated as a string. So even if they type a number like one through seven, it's treated as if it has double quotes around it. So you must keep the double quotes there if you want this to work with the input of the number one. Um, unless you put, say, the uh, int function here, which we studied earlier in this course, and you surround the input function call with that extra set of parentheses. I did not do that for uh, certain reasons. So I want the double quotes to be here around the one so that I could also check for the, a D in double quotes. Notice there's a little mini menu then when somebody types a one. This probably should be put into another submenu, like display submenu, probably. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, here's an if else if statement that's indented inside of this part of the if. That's very crucial that this if is inside there and not um, indented properly, uh, improperly. Um, this uh, allows the person to print both the list of names and the list of usernames. Uh, menu option two does the sorting, but all the work to do the sorting apparently is being done up in the function print sorted list. Hey, notice, here's one of the many examples in this program of passing a parameter. That names is passed as a parameter up 
to the function print sorted list. In that function, the parameter is named list, but it's really names. Names plugs in for list. And then that list is copied from right to left into another list named list sorted. This is, uh, read my lecture notes, that's one great way to make a copy of a list. Then the sort method is applied. If you don't do that, you actually mess up the original list. We've studied that in class. And then it's printed. So that works nicely as is. Menu option three allows the person to input a name, a username, I'm sorry. We find the position of username using the is found uh, function, which I think we've studied in class. You can trace this code, but is found uses a for loop to one by one iterate through the list and return the position number where a given uh, value is found. If it doesn't find it, and therefore it finishes this for loop without finding what it was looking for, it returns negative one, which often means not found in computer science. Negative one means not found, not zero, because zero is actually the first position of a list. And menu option four also makes use of that same code. Oh, in menu option three, you still have work to do. In menu option four, there's another nested if else statement that's inside of this part of the outer elif, uh, if else, if else, if. Um, this is, uh, checking to find corresponding values that line up with like a key. So for example, if this is the key, the value that we're looking for is the matching password. Key value, key value, key. We look it up here. If the key is found in position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, then you know that the matching password is in position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. That's the whole point of parallel lists. And moving on then to uh, menu option, wherever I was, six, we make sure that we pop, which is the way that you can remove something from a list in Python using the pop method. Look that up in my notes. A lot of the logic with this inner if else that's indented inside of elif is the same as we did up here in this elif clause, as well as up here in this LF section. And last of all, don't forget to break. Uh, the break command is one quick way to get out of a while loop. And this else has to match up with all of the ELIFs in case they type in a number that's, uh, say, a greater than seven or a number less than one. Do not create separate ifs for this menu system. Do not do that then you'll have what's called a dangling else and it just won't work right. Okay, I hope uh, you enjoyed this walkthrough of this program. Good luck.